All right, we'll give a few moments for everybody to find a live, live stream. And uh, hope everybody's doing, been doing well. And, uh, been a week, so we feel like it's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we was used to doing three, and now we've just done, just done one. So, all right, so we're, I'm seeing a few people log on now. So as you log on, if you if you don't mind, please uh, click share on your on the bottom of the stream so other folks can uh, find the stream and, and right. get on as well. And uh, but as I say, and it seems like it's been a while. Uh, it's been a week, but we we were out of, out of town uh, Sunday, so it uh, kind of hard for us to do one Sunday night. It had been later, and we were really tired. And, I've had a hard week, so I, I ask everybody to be praying for me tonight. Um, we we had pretty pretty hard week last week, working around the place here and gardening and different things we were doing, and and so then I went back to work and it's been pretty busy. So uh, just pray for me. It seemed like I was really tired last night. I feel a little better today, so just pray for me. Share the live stream if you don't mind and if you haven't been on before put your prayer request in the comments my wife is over here and she she looking at those and we try to get all of them down that we can and, and so uh, we try to we try to get all those prayer requests out all these wonderful people that log on with us uh, just about every service we have all these wonderful prayer warriors on here and, and that makes a difference the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and we know that and, the, and the, the prayers of the saints mean so so very much in our lives and I'm so thankful for for all the prayers that was prayed for me and uh, in my growing up and, and in my adult life that I know that the Lord has watched over me many times and, and so those prayers are always there so we're going to try to sing a few songs and and get started. We're just trying to give a moment for everybody to get on. If you haven't done so, click that share button. That way everybody can find the live stream easier. I did try to do a post, and forgive me, I'm <coughs> a lot of times I'm really late on doing those posts. Um, I guess I, it's in my mind I know I'm doing it, so I think everybody else should know. <laughs> but anyway, I tried to do one a little earlier to get that out, and, and I saw some folks shared that uh, as well. And um, when you see that, please share those. That way that everybody knows because there were some people questioning whether we was going to do one tonight. So anyway, we'll sing a few songs. If you got a prayer request, put it in the comments. My wife will uh, try to write that down. And everyone wants one, but that's not we're slighting anybody. Sometimes they roll pretty fast and they can get away from you. So, uh, But put your prayer requests in and we'll have prayer here in a little bit for all those that are sick and in trouble, lost people, uh, this world's in trouble, that's for sure. So uh, we'll try to get started in the singing. Keep on sharing the live stream. And, uh, everybody pray with us. And you want to start or you want me to? Doesn't matter.
old-time way. Praise the Lord. I uh, heard a song on Facebook today. Uh, Brother Chester Ely, we had it on tape years ago. And, and my mom, and I heard him sing this song as well. This ain't the song I heard on Facebook today. But he, I heard this, this was on the, on the same tape, I believe, that we had years ago. And, uh, sorry about that. Looks like we need an adjustment. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, this was one of the songs that was on that tape. I loved, I loved this song. And, uh, he sang it, and sister, my mom was actually talking about it over the weekend. We went down to Little Collie and had a wonderful service over there. And, yeah. And uh, she was talking about Sister Vicey singing this song years ago. She's a wonderful sister. Just sang, and I, I think I, I heard Brother brother Clement sing it growing up. And just, a, it's a good song. I don't know that I can do it, but I can remember it. Uh, Chester had a little lick he done on the guitar. And, uh, I, I learned how to do that <laughs> because of that. So I want to sing this song. This is a this is a good song. And, uh, got a lot of meaning to it. I tell you, we need to we need to earnestly pray and pray till we get through. Operator, information.
on the same one, sir. Keep on giving your prayer requests in and put them in the comments. And um, I'm going to try to get to those in a few minutes. We always try to get a few minutes to let people get uh, logged into the live stream. Sometimes it takes people a few minutes to get on. But uh, I hope I didn't tear up that song too bad. But it's a it's a wonderful song, I tell you. Get through to Jesus, amen. We ought to have a desire to get through to Him.
everybody pray with us. Like I said, we ain't on here for no show. I saw this song was next to the one he was singing a while ago. I think I sang, sang it one of our earlier live streams. This is another old one that takes me back to just when I was just a young man. And you know, those days are so important to us. They, they put an impression on us that uh, last for our whole lives. Those those folks that I listen to sing and and uh, get a hold of God and that connection that I made, it's lasted all down through my life. And it's just so important. And, you know, we make an impact. Uh, uh, somebody made a comment today there about being a help or something like that. And, and my reply was, is that we're all help to each other. You know, we all got to do our little part. We're all... Uh, we all got a part to play in this, and so I, I want to do my little part. I know it ain't much, but I want to do what I can do. This is a wonderful old song, too. Last night on my pillow, my heart began to pray. I thought about my blessed Lord so kind.
lay down at night and be able to feel the Spirit of the Lord and begin to talk to Him and just say, Lord, keep me safe. I couldn't tell you the times I've laid down at night and them bad storms be coming through and I hear the house begin to pop and crack. And I say, Lord, just, just watch over us and go back to sleep. Amen. There's a peace. There's a peace of God. It's worth serving the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, bring your quest. It's worth serving the Lord. <laughs> Amen. If they if they even went to heaven to gain, God's worth serving. I tell you, he's, he's, he's worth serving. The things that he can do, the things that he's done in my life. My, my son wasn't supposed to ever been healthy. He was supposed to have been born and uh, had, had all sorts of issues and and uh, Back several years ago, I thought how that he was in a weightlifting competition in high school. I saw him take and pick up and put up about 300 pounds over his head. It was 285 pounds. And, uh, you know, and he, he just pulled it up there. It looked so easy. His coach said he could have got a lot more. And, and But, you know, that coach was probably just thinking, oh, how strong he is. And, but the first thought that run through my mind is what God has done. God is a great God in me. Amen. He's worthy. When, when man can't do nothing, God can still do it. And my daughter last year, they, she got diagnosed with a disease that there's no cure for. But it no longer shows up in her blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. God. God's worthy to be served. He's worthy of serving there's nothing like serving God. There's a peace that you can have down in your soul when you lay down at night and you know, you know that God is there. <laughs> Amen. No matter what the trouble is, no matter what you're facing in life, you know that you can make it through because of the Savior. I'm going to try to read these. Just got the feeling good singing that song. I tell you what, I, I'm glad today of the Spirit of the Lord. I need Him. Needed him all down through my life. All right, now we got uh, Brother Paul and Sister Judy Blanton needing prayer. You know, Sister Judy's uh, battling Parkinson's disease, and God is a healer, and he's able to do that. And Paul's had a lot of problems with his knees and things. And pray for them. Helen Heisel uh, says pray for her family. Amen. she got to... Uh, a lot to pray for there. Big family, pray for them. Brittany Lewis is uh, for her and her family. Pray for them. We love Sister Brittany. Yeah. Uh, uh, pray for a friend's sister who's going for a third surgery to dissolve a huge kidney stone. People out there that's had kidney stones know what that's about. Bill and Myra Sailor, we know that Sister Myra is one of ours that we've been praying for that's battling cancer. <laughs> Paul and Debbie Sailor, uh, James Miles' nephew, Matthew Welch. He has cancer through his body and his brain. I didn't know that. Oh, please pray for that. Matthew Welch, cancer all through his body and his brain. June Limble says to pray for her and her family. Pray for all of them. Uh, Pamela Bowen said to remember her dad he's pretty sick and in a lot of pain he's another one uh, uh, one of the ones on the list with the cancer uh, Sandy Sparks a special unspoken request uh, and pray for Ray we love brother Ray Sparks he's a, a wonderful man I thought sister Matheny was pretty sick I went over there I felt like going one Sunday afternoon I believe it was and went over there and Sung a few songs for Sister Matheny. I thought, the Lord come by. Boy, I feel a meek spirit tonight. I can't help it. I thought a good spirit come by. And she hollered out in the spirit. <coughs> and singing that song. Brother Ray come and he said, you come. And he said, you preach in my house or sing or whatever. He just wanted whatever the Lord wanted to do. So... Just such a wonderful man, so much hospitality. So please remember Brother Ray and Sandy's uh, special request. Sister Joyce Hobbs is not feeling well. Uh, Cheryl Bowman said pray for 
for her and her family. She's, she's Cheryl's got a husband. I guess he's cold on the water, backslidden, whatever you want to say. And love to see him back in the house of God. Amen. I love him. Brother, uh, uh, Sister Connie Bertram says pray for her. She's been weak all day. Sister Connie Cook did a lot of cooking. We was down there at Colin. She did it for Brother Benny's birthday, but she done a lot of cooking. Wonderful job. And please pray for her. She's she uh, she tries to do for others. She's cooked many a meal for me over the years that I went over to Little Collie, and sometimes she would just cook and bring it and leave it, and not even eat with us. I, I wanted to stay and eat. She'd just leave it and say, "No, I was cooked so so y'all would have something good to eat." Cook for Benny and Mary and all of us, and, and uh, we really appreciate Sister Connie. Jennifer Helton Parsons says, "Pray for her mother. Definitely pray for her mother." Wilma Roberts, uh, pray for her and her children and her grandchildren. We love Sister Wilma. And Brenda Collins from down at Little Collie. Brenda Collins says, "Pray for her and her family." And uh, she's got a sister. I know that she's been giving requests for on Facebook, so I believe it's her sister Arlene, if I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm not. I believe that's the one it was. It was Arlene. Definitely pray for her. Uh, let's see, here's something I didn't know. Uh, my Uncle Charles Howard, he's failed, hurt his knee and foot and his shoulder and arm. So he'd had a he, he had the, the shoulder surgery, and well, maybe he didn't hurt the shoulder and arm, but he's already got, he had the shoulder surgery in his arm and hand and been bothering him already, and so now he's failed, hurt his knee and his foot, so pray for him. Uh, this is from Sister Brenda Miles. It says that she had uh, uh, two spots on her liver. So remember, Brenda, we've been pray, pray, praying special for her. And I, I'll say this before we pray. Sister Brenda was in the hospital. She had a lot of things working against her. And the people was a-praying. And she was a-believing. I can tell you that. She holds on to the Lord. Sister Brenda's a believer in the power of God. And uh, the Lord brought her out. He brought her out. I mean, I know she ain't... She ain't sounded well and healed completely from all of all of that, but you know what? The Lord is able to move and do things to help us. And I know that uh, Brother James couldn't be with her, and I know that had to be so hard. So remember, Brenda, the Lord can take care of those, uh, uh, those spots that showed up on her liver. So if everybody will, now at this time, let's all pray together for these requests before we get into the Word. Pray earnest for these. These are all, all very near and dear to our hearts. If you don't know some of them, you probably know a lot of them, but you may not know some of them. Pray for them. They're all wonderful, good people in need of help. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, today as we come before you, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you send your life to visit your people.
few minutes by the help of the Lord. We can't do nothing without Him. We are nothing without Him. Without, without His Spirit, we can't do nothing. Amen. I think we've read that during some of these that we've done. And but if you want to be turning in your Bibles to First First Corinthians chapter twelve, uh, that's where we're going to read. And uh, things kind of come together. I like I said, I've been busy this week and at work and things. And as I began to testify about how that how much that we needed each other, and I remember that comment. Uh, this scripture really goes away goes along with those things. Uh, uh, that, that I was testifying a little bit about, about how we're all members of one body. I tell you, folks, we need each other. And, and before I get into this, uh, I, I tell you, your gift, what you've got, the Lord gives everybody something to do. And you know, the devil tells us that we're all unnecessary. He tells me that all the time and and tells me, you know, I could, I could move up in the mountain somewhere and, and then just live by myself and and I'd probably be capable of doing that. I, 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 don't, uh, I don't require a lot of interaction. I can be kind of a, a loner type of person. I could probably do that. And I know that I could. But uh, you know what? That's not the will of God for anybody. Hey, Amen. That's, that's not the will of God for my life. Uh, there's something that he's got for me to do. Uh, when I was just a teenager, like I said, all these things that stick out in my mind, all the all the people that sung songs, and uh, I, I could go through all of them. She singing that song reminded me of Sister Kathleen, which is a distant cousin of mine, and I was talking earlier about Brother Chester and how that he used to sing and work for the Lord. I was telling my children about him. Uh, all the ones that's, that's just paved the way and, 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 and gave something for us to hold on to, and uh, you know, we're important to one another, and that's what I said in the, in a little, just a little short message when somebody had sent me something. I said, we need each other. And I think that was Sister Brenda that said she appreciated uh, us trying to help everybody, and, and, I, and I am. I am trying to be a help to everybody. That's all I've ever wanted to be because there's been so many that's helped me, and you know, I, I've, I've had people that talk to me about churches and different things like that, and I've always prayed, and I've never, uh, never felt like, you know, doing that or whatever. And uh, I just want to be a help. Uh, I just want to be a help. I want to help God's people, whatever it is. And uh, but, uh, but what I'm wanting to get across is, we need everybody to feel that way. You need to understand, no matter how much the devil tells you that you can't do no good, you're part of the body. You're necessary. Your gift that you was given, when I when I was uh, when I was a teenager before uh, before that I'd ever prayed. I we you know we we been around the music in church and and wholeness our 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 services a lot a lot about music, and you know I tried to play a little had a little guitars that Dad had and old Univox uh, hollow body electric and I beat on it and I couldn't do nothing, but you know there was a night that I had a dream. And I, I know that it was a dream from God. I saw myself in that dream. I saw myself walk in the church. And as I walked up there, I stopped and played every instrument in the building. And you know what? I, I, I've uh, I, I played a lot of instruments. And I, I told my kids, I said, I can't, I feel like I'm a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Uh, I can play a lot of instruments, but I, I seem like I ain't never really satisfied with nothing I do. But the point is, I, I'm able to fall in and help somewhere. If I go to church and there's an instrument vacant, I can get on there and try to do my little part. Amen. And that's what I want to do. And I know that was from God because when I got saved, <laughs> hallelujah, when I got saved, when I went down to the altar and got saved, Brother, uh, Brother David Matheny showed me the chords on the piano not long after I got saved. And after David showed me those chords and how to, how to do a little rhythm, I, I began to learn how to play a little bit, and I, I'm definitely no musician like Brother David, but I, I learned, I began to learn how to play, and it wasn't just a, just a few months, I was, I was sitting behind the piano at Crestview Church, playing the piano and singing, and I'd only been in church, like I said, a short time, and the Lord gave me the ability to, 
to make a little bit of rhythm on that. And I thought one night as I was sitting there just as a just as a young man and just trying to keep rhythm on the piano, the Spirit of God come by and, and all the people began to dance and get in. And there I was just a, well, I can tell you, I felt like absolute nothing. But you know what? The Lord let me sit there and keep rhythm and play on that piano while everybody danced and got in. That's what I want to be today. I may not be nothing, but I still want to do my little part. I still want to hang on and do that. Give you an opportunity to get turned to 1 Corinthians. I won't try to hurry and get out of the way. I know things kind of getting back to normal. More people might be working now. I feel a real humble spirit tonight. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says like this. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as ye were led, where, wherefore I give you t to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Amen. There ain't nothing that God does that will work against itself because it's all worked by the same spirit, by the same leadership, by the same operation. Glory to God today. We are just uh, uh, nothing but a vessel to carry what God wants to do. Amen. We don't have anything to do with it. If we're truly a child of God, I know I, I know that there's probably people out there that study out their message and they, they look it up or whatever and and they uh, they go into to great depth, and, I, and I'm a believer in studying the Bible. I do study the Bible, and uh, I have. And uh, but but here's the thing: that we we do that so God can use us. Amen. We're preparing our vessel. Amen. We do that, and we try to use it ourselves. It's useless. But but when God gets involved, Amen. It makes all the difference. And nothing that God does, He won't let me do something. And let somebody do something contrary. Amen. What what happens will be hand in hand. Down at, we was down at the little college church, and Brother Jerry Maggard came over from Grassy. There's several of the Grassy folks over there, and uh, we had a wonderful service, and I preached that day. And uh, Jerry Maggard come out of the back, and and I said, "Come on, brother. You know we're workers. We we were workers together." Amen. I told him to to come on up, mind the Lord, and. And, and he had, I think, about three verses, amen, and I just felt like it it put the perfect finishing touch on what God was trying to do. It wasn't my message anyway. It didn't bother me that he used Jerry to, to finish the message. It didn't bother me one bit. I was so thrilled at how everything worked together, and that's just the way it is. Uh, glory to God. That same spirit, when it's moving on, folks, it'll work right hand in hand. Uh, glory to God, and when it's done, it'll be something beautiful, not because of me, not because of you, but because it was God. Amen. That's, that's how that it is. In the seventh verse here, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Amen. I could, I could spend a lot of time right there. Amen. Before I even get into the things that it talks about, we've uh, we focused uh, a lot of times you've heard people focus from the 8th verse to the 11th verse amen and they read right over this 7th verse amen I want you to know that what God does uh, it's given to profit with all amen and the Lord is in the building up business he's in the saving business he's in the forgiving business I'm glad that the Lord's mercies are new every morning. I'm glad, hallelujah to God today, uh, that his mercies aren't finite like mine and yours. Uh, uh, glory to God that uh, uh, somebody might look at me and say, yeah, I remember when he did this. 
Well, you're right. I probably did. Uh, I, I'm a man and I've made failures. Glory to God. And you can point all the fingers you want to at me. Uh, glory to God. That's just fine. Uh, but I'm glad that I got a Savior. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Uh, glory to God. And he is a great forgiver. And what he forgives, he don't bring up no more. Amen. Forgiveness is really forgiveness with God. Uh, the Lord uh, don't hold one thing against you. Man might hold something over your head uh, but I want you to know that God when he watches you clean he don't leave a, a, a spot, wrinkle, or a blemish. He takes it all away. And if they somebody, you might say, well, uh, oh, so-and-so, they didn't, never could forgive me. Uh, let that be on them. Don't let it be on you. Glory to God. Hey, if God's forgiven you, whom he set free is free indeed. Glory to God today. Uh, those sins are wiped away forever. Amen. I'm telling you, he's a God that's able to uh, to put things away. Hey, Amen. Our little minds, we've always got that memory and that devil that helps us to remember. Hey, Amen. It's funny how he'll help us to, to remember all the bad stuff, isn't it? Hey, Amen. He'll bring it back to you on yourself. I've had that problem. Hey, Amen. The enemy, well, the Lord ain't going to move for you. The Lord, remember when the Lord moved on you and you didn't, you wasn't willing, you didn't do nothing? Now, why would the Lord move on you? I'm glad that the Lord's merciful. Ain't you? I'm telling you, God's merciful. We need each other, folks. We need each other. We need to be each other to be willing to please God. Uh, the Bible said here, the manifestation of the Spirit, is, it is given to every man to profit. Amen. This means it will help people. Amen. Well, glory to God. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God won't run nobody out of the church. Amen. Yes, if somebody is... Uh, in another spirit, glory to God, uh, there is a power to cast out devils and those types of things. Uh, but I can tell you, it's a serious accusation to say somebody's got a foul spirit. Amen. I'm to tell you, if you speak against somebody that's got the spirit of God like that, you've done a, a dangerous thing. Amen. Because you you can talk about me all you want to. Amen. But you, you talk about the Holy Ghost, you're a dangerous business. Amen. That's a dangerous business. Now, uh, we'll, we'll get into the uh, gifts of the Spirit here. But that's really not altogether where my message is. I just wanted to, to point out that God gives something to every man to be a prophet to everybody else. Something that's profitable. Amen. You might think that you can, you can draw back and it won't hurt nobody but you. But I can tell you it hurts the whole body. Amen. You're needed in the house of God. You're needed in the body of Christ. For to eighth verse said, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. We need that. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. We need that. To another faith by the same Spirit. Amen. We we know we need that. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Amen. We need that gifts of those gifts of healing. To another working of miracles. Amen. We need, need to see those miracles. Amen. We need it. To another prophecy. Oh, how we love prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. Amen. We need it. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. Need all these things. But all these worketh. Listen. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Amen. God is the one who sets us in the body. He sets us in as he would have us to be. Uh, glory to God. He gives us the things that we're supposed to do. You can't join the church and decide uh, that you're going to go to seminary and spend and, and, and begin to study the word of God and be a preacher. All you're going to be is a well studied man of glory to God uh, without a calling to preach. Amen. Today I 
I think it's a wonderful thing if somebody can spend years of studying the Bible and truly be called to preach. That's wonderful. Hey, man, if you're called, you will study to show yourself approved. You will study to know what saith the word of God. Uh, you will uh, take it so serious that you'd be afraid not to. Uh, glory to God today. But I want you to know uh, we can't set ourselves in the body where we want to be, uh, but we have to accept what the will of God is for us. Hey, man, we have to seek that out and know what the will of God is and it is necessary that each and every one of God's children uh, know where they are in the body and do that that's given to them and you may not totally understand as you walk through life what your calling uh, may be until uh, the Lord's already brought you into it uh, because he'll lead you a step at a time and when you get there you'll, you'll realize what God's led you into amen Glory to God. You may not understand that, but uh, I, can, I, know, I know a lot of people does. Amen. The Lord, uh, he, he guides us day by day, step by step. Amen. I can remember how the Lord was moving on me years ago and uh, how I get scriptures and how the, that I would hear, hear the spirit of the Lord just rolling in my mind and how that that would uh, that would speak to me, and I'd feel like I was going to bust, and uh, I'd, I, and I'd testify sometimes, and, and finally one one day about preaching time on a Sunday morning, Brother Harold, he said, uh, he said, Brother Howard, do you feel like preaching today? Hey, Amen. It busted out of me just as soon as he said it. Hallelujah to God today. I knew that the Lord was dealing with me. I know uh, that he was a word in my mouth and how the Lord moved on me that day. Glory to God today. Uh, I really probably didn't understand altogether uh, up right up till the very end all the things, the reason the Lord was dealing with me the way that he was. Oh, but it began to come clear and I had to get willing. I had to do what the Lord wanted me to do. And let me tell you something. It's beneficial to the church when we do what God's got for us to do. It's beneficial to everybody. No matter what your calling is, amen, you need to get willing to do what God's got for you to do. Uh, you're not just... Hey, hallelujah. You're not just hurting yourself if you draw back and uh, you want to stay in your comfort zone and do uh, like you've done for years or whatever. Uh, glory to God. Let me tell you something. It's important today that everybody gets on fire for God. Listen to what the Bible said. I'm down to the 12th verse. This is really what I mostly wanted to get into, but all these all this flows right together. It said, for as the body is one. Hey Amen. You're looking at me as one body. And hath many members. Many, many parts. We got different parts. Amen. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Amen. One. Glory to God. I know that, uh, that uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 24 there is, is being fulfilled. It said there that, that uh, cause the love of many. Because iniquity would bound, the love of many would wax cold. We're in that time. We are in that time. But there's just one body. And there's just one spirit. Amen. That's all that there can be. And that's all there ever was and will be in the Lord. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Question mark. Well, I can tell you, it is of the body. We're one. Amen. How can we, how can we separate our body asunder? 16th verse said, and if, if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? 
Still part of the body. Amen. You know, the devil tries to accomplish this in us. He says, nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. Amen. Uh, the Lord's not going to do nothing for you. The devil talks to us this way. But I can tell you, he's a liar. Don't listen to him. Listen to this word right here. Listen to what the word's got to say. And it said, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? See, everything's needed. Glory to God. But now hath God said, the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. Amen. He sets us in the body where we are to be. Glory to God. We don't need to want nothing no more. We don't need to want nothing no less. Wherever God sets us in the body, we need to be satisfied. And if they were all one member, where were the body? We can't all do the same thing. We can't all be the same member. Uh, glory to God. Everybody's got, uh, got their own way about them. Uh, people shout different. People get in different ways. Uh, glory to God. But there's still just one spirit. But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Those members of the body which seem to be more feeble <coughs> are necessary. Amen. I want you to know if you feel down low, amen, you're necessary. Don't never let the devil tell you anything any different. Amen. You're necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I, I've seen in the church world that a lot of times that uh, somebody who maybe wants to be a preacher, they, they kind of want to be a church boss. But you got it all back. Amen. If you're a strong enough Christian, if you're a strong enough man and woman for the Lord to give you a, a, a calling or something to do in the church, I can tell you what he called you to do. Regardless of the specific calling, I can tell you what he called you to do. He called you to be a servant. Amen. That's all he calls is servants. Amen. He didn't call no bosses. He didn't hey, hallelujah. He didn't call nobody to be a Lord over God's heritage. Hallelujah to God, but he called us uh, to help one another, uh, to do our job in the body and to encourage all those other parts and make it so that the other parts of the church and the other members of the church uh, can do what they uh, need to do, and what they must do, glory to God. And when everybody's working together, it will work just right. Glory to God today, but you let something get out of joint or get out of how to sink a little bit. Uh, glory to God today if the left uh, the left foot wants to step uh, at the same time that the right foot steps will fall down. Uh, but we have to be our part where God wants us in the body and do what God's got for us to do. If we don't do the things uh, and go and do the things that God has set us in to do, we're crippling the body. Amen. You might look at yourself and you... You might be burning down and the enemy might have troubled you in such a way. Hallelujah, I'm talking to somebody tonight. The enemy may have troubled you in such a way that you're willing to just sit back and, and draw back on God. And you might say, well, I, I just can't fight the battle no more. I'm too weary. Well, if you feel like that, I want you to know sometimes you may feel like, well, I, I, I just can't do no good. It's just about me. But I can tell you, when you draw back, you think about that poor little soul that just needs a little bit of help. That soul burning down is right on the edge. Amen. You might have the very thing that that little person needs. Oh, have you ever been broken and needed a hand and somebody to lift you up? I have. Amen. I've been right down on the bottom. More than one time I've been right down on the bottom and needed somebody. Uh, just a word of encouragement. 
Uh, glory to God, something to help me. Uh, glory to God, you know what? You might be that person for somebody if you do what God's got for you to do. You could be that person, no doubt, uh, that could lift them up and encourage them and help them. I'm telling you, everybody's needed in the body. Uh, you might say, well, uh, well, I'll just talk about me. Hallelujah to God. I've been put out of churches before. Hallelujah. I've had somebody tell me they would come back to sit in the back of the church. Uh, they didn't want no part of me. I said, I didn't come to bother you. Hallelujah to God. I didn't come. I, that's not what I'm about. I won't be back unless the Lord would send me back. I just come to try to be a help. Hey, man, if I can't be a help, I won't bother you. That's not what I'm about. Uh, glory to God. It don't matter. Uh, somebody in this life is not going to want you. Uh, they didn't want Jesus. How much better are me and you than Jesus was? Hey, man, you might say, well, uh, people talks about me, puts me down. Hey, man, that happens all the time. Right. Hey, man, today, how much better are you than Jesus? Uh, hey, man, get in the body and do your part. Uh, God's got something for you to do. Uh, the Lord gave me uh, something to do when I was just a teenager. Hey, man, gave me a dream uh, before I got saved and showed me uh, glory to God what it, what it was going to give me and but before I even had that dream I was at a revival and there was a, a black minister there that didn't have no idea who I was or where I was from uh, glory to God and he began to prophesy to me about the many ministries uh, that the Lord had had ahead of me and how that I needed to pray and seek uh, you know what I failed to do that I caused myself uh, troubles down through life and from the time that I was I guess 11 or 12 years old I would have prayed and sought God how much better could it have been uh, but you know what just as a young boy I, I know about the Lord I'd failed his spirit deal with me but you know what we think we want some of the world what a sorry thought that is yeah. amen there ain't nothing in the world you know the, the best days that I've had has been serving God hallelujah I've tried I tried some things in the world <laughs> hallelujah to God but you know what there ain't nothing like the spirit of the Lord <laughs> hey, amen when I'm tired and weak and weary that spirit of God can get on me and make me feel brand new. Hey Amen. I don't get up the next morning with a headache. I don't get up hung over. I'm telling you what, the spirit of God's real. People say, oh, oh, you just get emotional. Hey Amen. No, there's something that can get on a man or woman. Hallelujah. I've had it to get on me. Uh, take away uh, all that work that you've done and be real sore and bad shape. He can take that and it not come back. Hey Amen. I'm telling you, there's a God that's able. He's able to do these things. We need each other. Hallelujah. He said, uh, those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these, we bestow more abundant honor and have our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need. Amen. But I'm telling you today, if you think God has given you something, a glory to God, if you think he's given you understanding, he ain't gave you no understanding to stand over by somebody and say, well, I've got all this wisdom and you ain't got none. A glory to God. He's gave it to you to hand it out. A glory to God. Freely you've received freely give amen in the spirit of love and meekness of the way that it was given glory to god today he hasn't given us anything that we could be a proud within ourselves. anything that god has ever done uh, through any man or woman uh, uh, no matter how great the prophet uh, uh, what would they have done without god's spirit uh, absolutely nothing amen we don't have nothing to take pride in amen the life we live, you know what? God lives through us. People, there's, there's people that's in sin all the time. They say, well, I, I just, you know, I, it just seems like I can't straighten up and live the way God wants me to live. Well, you're right. Amen. When you're a sinner, the prince and the power of the air is what guides you, whether you know it or not. Amen. But when you get saved, you get a new guide. <laughs> Amen. Hey, amen. We don't live this on our own. We're kept by the power of God. Hey, amen. It's not of it's not of myself. It's not nobody uh, that can do anything on their own. But it's the power of God. It's the wisdom of the Lord. Whatever that we get and can do, we receive of Him. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together. Listen, He's tempered the body together. 
having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Amen. Don't you think sometimes things have turned around a little bit? Amen. I'm not a believer in putting no preachers on a pedestal. They're servants. If they do good, it's because the Spirit of God moved on them. That's it. Amen. There ain't no uh, how many times a prophet gets in. I thought, I was telling my wife, what a wonderful man Brother Charles Elam was. How he could prophesy. And she, she knows she's around him some. <clears throat> but I growed up around him. I know, I know the times that he'd got a hold of God for me. Amen. But you know what Charles would have been without the Spirit of God? He'd just been Brother Charles. Amen. He couldn't have done those things. It takes the Spirit of God. Amen. We have to humble ourselves. I understand that. We have to seek and pray and all those things. But it's still God that does the work. Amen. And there's more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Amen. Brother Fred Collett used to say it like this. There's no big eyes and no little use. Amen. Glory to God. We're brothers and sisters in this. Let's, let's go to heaven together. Let's make it. We can make it. Amen. We He fixed it so that we can make it. Amen. We're all just in this together. We need each other. I need you. Glory to God. If you don't need me, I need you anyway. Amen. We need each other. Glory to God. We're all part of that, that one body. We need to all be willing to do our part. There's so many. Uh, glory to God. Don't get hurt at me. Uh, there's been people that has been saved for 20 years before I got saved. Amen. And they're still, uh, glory to God, doing the same thing they was doing all them years ago. Uh, glory to God today. Uh, let's press out. Let's do our best. Uh, amen. It may not be, I know that it, God don't give everybody a talent to save. Uh, but I can tell you, we need prayer warriors. Uh, we need people to reach out and talk to this lost and dying world. Uh, those that a lot of times that feel like they couldn't help, I want you to know you could be the greatest help that ever was if you just open your eyes up, look up to Jesus, and let him take control. Amen. I'm telling you, you can touch somebody. Amen. You can be a light to somebody. Amen. It says here at... Uh, I love that, having the same care one for another. 26 verse said, and whether one member suffer, this is what we're doing praying, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Hey Amen, ain't that beautiful? I'm telling you, the word of God is beautiful. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. That's what we are. We're the body of Christ, and each one of us is a member in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Now listen, are all apostles, question mark? Are all prophets, question mark? Are all teachers, question mark? Are all workers of miracles, question mark? Have all the gifts of healing, question mark. Do all speak with tongues, question mark. And do all interpret, interpret. 31st verse said, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Amen. Desire to get a hold of the best gifts. He said, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. You know what that excellent way is? If you go on into chapter 13, I'm not going to do that to us tonight. But that chapter 13 is the one we call the charity chapter. <laughs> Amen. It goes through all this. It says, covet earnestly the best, best gifts, and yet I show unto you a more excellent way. That more excellent way is charity. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Ain't you glad of the word of God tonight? I am. I'm glad that we, we, we can have that same care one towards another. Amen. You're just as important. Don't let the devil tell you no different. You're as important if you... Uh, been praying for years and you sit there and you you go home and you pray night after night you're one of those prayer wars i tell you what uh, glory to god you may not be doing anything uh in the church house but god if you're doing what god's got for you to do 
Hallelujah to God, you're doing your part. Everybody's got a part to play. Amen. They's got a, they, you got something to do. Amen. We need to get busy. You know what? When, the, when all of us work together, it makes it easier on the rest. I've heard some of the old preachers talk about the team of mules. Some of you older ones have probably heard. Maybe some of the younger ones don't even know what I'm talking about. But you can take a horse and hook it up to a cart by itself and, and pull it right down. But you could take take one of those, uh, 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 I think maybe they call them a tree or whatever, and, and hook two mules to it, and oh, how much easier it is. Running that tree on up there and branches out there and put you two more on there. After a while, it gets easy. You know why? Because them, all the mules are pulling together. Amen. We need to pull together. We need to all do our best. We've all got a part to play. People scared. People's in trouble. People's uh, needing help. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. Let's not let let's not let this salt lose its savor. People are looking for something. Hey man, today you can be a great light wherever that you are. Hey man, maybe that's what the Lord placed you in the body for. He may have placed you and. And I'm a believer that God knows all about the time when we would be here. Did you ever read that scripture? <coughs> Maybe I was placed here for such a time as this. Amen. God knows, knows where you'd be. He knows where you are. He knew you'd be there. He knew the time and and the season, you know, he, only the Father in heaven knows when he's going to come back. Amen. He's going to send him back, but he knows the time. He knew where he was going to be. Do what God's got for you to do. There's something for you to do. There's something, somebody you can reach. Amen. We need everybody pulling and doing their best. Don't listen don't give that devil, I'm trying to hush, but don't give the devil the time of day to talk to you, to be afraid, uh, to doubt what God's got for you, to doubt what God's got for you to do. Don't give him a moment of your time. Amen. Just look up and say, Lord, lead me each and every step. Amen. Lord, you got to tell me which way to go. I thought they told about the brother that was going to pray for, I guess it was a girl that was dying or had died. And uh, he come to the road at Fork. Lord, tell me which way to go. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. That's the way this is in life. If you're going to follow the Lord, you just say, Lord, tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. Amen. I know it's hard sometimes. And I know that if you try to follow the Lord and do what he wants you to do, the enemy will be on your trail somewhere. You'll, you'll probably make a little mistake. You'll probably get aggravated and say something that you wish that you hadn't. I have. Amen. That's the way that it is. There's trials and temptations in this life. But I'm thankful today that the Bible said that we had an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He said, I write unto you that you sin not, but if you sin, we have an advocate. Amen. Today, uh, glory to God. I, I know that when I was growing up, I was preached perfection so much, and I'm a believer in that. Amen. We're supposed to uh, be holy as he is holy. Uh, but I can tell you that you're a human, and somewhere in life, amen, you're going to get in the valley, and that enemy's going to uh, jump on your back, and he's going to point out your ever shortcoming. Amen. I've had him to do it to me. And he'll cause you to want to give up. But you know what? The Lord don't want you to give up. The Lord wants you to say, Lord, help me to do better. And he will. I thank the Lord that he's merciful upon this old human condition. Amen. We're, well, we're, we're in, in this flesh. You know, Paul wrote a, a, a wonderful writing. He said, those things that I would do, I do them not. 
But those things that I would not, that them I do. Amen. He was talking about the battle between the flesh and the spirit. Amen. And it's an everyday battle. Amen. And if you you let the enemy come at you and, and day after day, you're going to have to put the enemy out of your mind. The church needs to come together. The church needs to press forward. We need to all bind together and pull together. We've all got one goal in mind. We're going to make it to God's good heaven. Amen. We're going, we can make it together. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. We need to bind our hearts and minds together. Amen. So that we can make it. And not only that, but that we can reach out. Hey, if you could just see us in your mind, uh, glory to God, if you can see us in mind, all of us grouped together. Hey, Amen. And somebody out here just reach and grab somebody and pull them in the number. Hey, Amen. Bring them right in. Put them in the middle of us. Uh, in safety, glory to God. Uh, those little ones, uh, uh, when they get saved, they need to be uh, brought right in the middle where, where they can't nothing get to them. We can protect them all that we can. Uh, glory to God, instead of protecting them, a lot of times when they come into the church, put heavy burdens on them. Instead of letting them get saved and, and let them learn and grow and learn how to live and what to do, Amen. They just begin to beat them down. I'm telling you, that ain't God's, uh, that's not God's work. That's not God's wisdom. Amen. Uh, glory to God. You let this get in their heart. Uh, hallelujah to God. You let God move on you. He'll put a desire on them. Uh, glory to God to do everything that they can do to please God. And it won't be a burden to them. That's how this works. Amen. If, I, if I'm doing something for somebody else, I'm wasting my time. Oh, but when God puts something in my heart, amen, when I lay something down because I want to get closer to God, it ain't no burden, amen. It's just laying off every weight and sin that so easily be said me. Amen, I'm glad, Lord, I feel like I could preach all night. I, I was tired when we got started, but I feel good in my soul now. We've got these prayer requests, and has any more come in? Got two more requests. Here, you get them for me. I'm going to give these other requests in. I'm going to try to get out of the way. I preached a lot longer than I planned on. I, I didn't I didn't, uh, didn't think I would go this long. I didn't think I'd read the whole chapter, but I just couldn't get out of it. Uh, it said, uh, remember the little girl that's nine years old with brain cancer in Hamilton, Ohio? Hey, Amen. We've been praying for that. And Mildred Mc McKinney, I'm glad uh, Mildred's on with us. Mildred McKinney requests prayers for, uh, for Mildred Sue. So... We want to remember those prayers as we pray, those prayer requests. I I know we didn't get one for him tonight, but Brother Mike Elliott, everybody remember Brother Mike? I was thinking about him. He's He's been going through a lot of health issues, and it's a bad time. And Sister Eugle said that he would have probably been in the hospital there a few weeks back if it hadn't been for everything going on. You know, it's it's dangerous everywhere you, where you turn. So he's been trying to fight through it. and I won't talk no specifics. I don't like to get into people's <clears throat> business. You know, sometimes that bothers. But a lot of the people on this don't know Brother Mike Elliott. I hope you know him like I know him. Amen. A uh, tender-hearted child of God. Loves to pray for the sick. Loves to, loves to humble himself. I've seen the big tears run off his face. I'll, I'll give in that request. Pray for Brother Mike Elliott. I'd love to see him get some help. Amen. And, and I know the Lord has has helped him. I know you were saying down there Sunday that maybe they said his kidneys improved just a little bit. And, but that, that's, you know what? If God's people binds together, that that would just be that would just be a, a little piece of what God does. Amen. God is able to do all things. If you're cold and backslid on God, I want to say you need to get back into the house. Amen. We're down in the Saturday evening of time. Amen. It's time that we all need to be in the house of the Lord doing their very best, doing what we know how to do for God. I can tell you, God is calling the people. This has been a wake-up call. Don't, don't let it pass. Amen. I, if we go to hell, it'll be because we sent ourselves. God's not sending us there. We know that there's a there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. Amen. And I can tell you, 
If you miss heaven, you just won't miss the good part. You'll gain the bad. And we need to, we need to make it. We have to make it. We have to make it. Everybody that will. Let's, let's humble ourselves and pray. Pray for all those that are backslid. Pray for all those that are lost. Amen. That they would humble their hearts and get back into the house of God. Dear Heavenly Father, today we come before you in the name of Jesus. Beg you, Lord, today to touch the hearts. Touch the minds, Lord, today. Those that are lost, those that are in trouble.
somebody sent us in a song request here. I'll do the best I can. I can't get the tune in my mind. We always try to, you know, somebody's wanting to hear a song. A lot of times that's a song they need to hear. And we just have to depend on the Lord to, to help us. Do you know that I don't regret them all? I don't 
check up on my blood work there and like y'all know that I've had some things going on I've got a prolactome I think it's a non uh, what, what's the non cancerous called it's benign. benign I guess benign tumor but, but anyway it's it's caused it, it caused me some problems but they put me on some medication and uh, I don't know what all they'll be checking tomorrow or, Whatever, but anyway, I do want I do want the Lord to be with me in that. And uh, she sent me a note here to remind everybody we we're going to be doing Thursday nights each week, and if we can get a weekend service, if everybody can get together, I don't know. Right now, we're not having Sunday evening church, and I thought we'd pr probably try to do Sunday evenings when we could. Uh, like I said last week, we about a little collie that just would hardly able to do that so uh, before we close I want to pray for that that prayer request and all these requests again and then we got one more thing that we're going to take care of before we, we sign off so okay 
Okay, we'll, we'll pray first and then let y'all testify. So let's all pray for these, these requests one more time. Dear Heavenly Father, today Jesus, we know that you're able to do all Lord, things. Lord. Today, We're believing and so trusting in you. I know that I can't do one God. thing. But God, today we know that your power is limited. The only thing that limits you, Lord, is our faith. We believe completely, Lord, in you and your ability, Lord, to heal and do all things. Things that are healing, things that are monetary, things of glory, God, that you just need to touch in people's hearts, Lord, things that you need to fix in lives, uh, situations that's in people's lives and uh, relationships that are broken, Lord, you can heal them all. Amen. I know that you can do that, Lord, and how great your hand is able to do these things. We pray that you move on, Diane, but Lord, today and all these other requests, Lord, you're able to do these things. We're asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Go ahead and testify. I was just going to say there's uh, been a testimony that's burning my heart, and I'll think about it, and then it'll slip away. But tonight it really seemed to go with the message, and so I wanted to give it in, and it stayed with me, so I guess it must have been time to give it in. Um, there was a, a time, uh, it's been maybe around my first year or second year of college, probably my first year, I would say, when uh, I was feeling kind of burdened down and uh, not feeling like I was doing so well uh, spiritually and things. And... Uh, I had uh, kind of missed church, I guess, for maybe going on two weeks and however many services that is, maybe six services or something like that. And just, you know, my excuse was, well, I got college going on. I'm too busy. I, I can't come. But that was just an excuse. I could have went if I really wanted to. And uh, Dad was talking about all the, the different people in the church and all their different functions and what they can do. You know, somebody might just bake a cake. Somebody just might call somebody on, and man. say something. and. Uh, there might be someone that uh, reaches out to you or maybe goes to the elderly home or something like that, you know, and um, they help them by going and witnessing with them and talking to those people, you know. Um, like right now, there's people that they would love to be able to talk to somebody that's, you know, quarantined in their home, but they just can't see anybody right now. But that's getting off on a tangent. I want to go ahead and uh, finish with what I was talking about. But there was a, a gentleman that goes to our church, uh, Jim Tyree, that he noticed that I hadn't come to church for a little while. Yeah. And he said uh, he was going to come by. And so mom had told me that he was, uh, he was downstairs waiting to talk to me for a little bit. And so I'd come downstairs to talk to him. And he said that I've come for the lost sheep. And so he, or maybe the lost lamb. And he'd come to talk to me and tell me how I needed to come to church and how that he loved me and that he missed me. And he wanted me to be there and he wanted to see me get help. And um, he's just being really good to me, you know, and sometimes that's all that you need is somebody to come and talk to you and say, we love you, we miss you, and, uh, you know, Amen. I want you to do your best. And so um, here recently there's been a lot of people uh, at church, you know, lifting us up for things that we've done, but um, I'm just thankful, Lord, even when you're in the valley, you know, you may not be go doing good, but he's thinking of you then, and he might send somebody to your house then when you're in the valley. And then when you're, you know, on the mountaintop or you feel like you're doing better, he's blessing you and thinking of you then and sending people to uh, talk to you then too. And I'm just thankful of the Lord, all that he does for us. He does so many things and there's so many different people out there that can help other people in different ways. We're not all preachers and pastors and singers and whatnot, but we can help one another. We can reach out with a good love, you know, a charity and uh, just help one another. That's what we're here to do. Amen. Anybody else feel like saying anything else? I want to thank the Lord for all he addressed for me. I thought, I'm so thankful that the Lord knows exactly what we need to hear and when we need to hear it. I thought the message, I, I haven't talked to Dad about anything, but I had a conversation this week with a friend about callings on our lives and maybe what we felt like we had been called to and how we thought, you know, that it seemed like a crazy thing, maybe, or that what would people think if I tried to do this, you know, even though that's what we feel like the Lord has maybe called us to do, but just scared of what people would think. But I thought a lot of what Dad preached tonight just spoke right to me about what I need to do and how I need to get willing to move on up to what I feel like he's called me to do. just thinking during the preaching um, it made me think back to something that I had seen um, 
before and it was just like a little poster type thing and it said uh, well done my good and faithful and then it had a list of things and it said um, things like you know teacher preacher prophet um, singer and bishop and you know all these different positions in the church and it had a big long list and so it says well good well done my good and faithful then all those things were listed and they were all crossed out and at the bottom it said servant and so that's stuck with me you know and that's what the bible says you know when it talks about people entering into heaven he says to them well well done my good and faithful servant and so you know it doesn't matter what position you're in we all have that same title um, on whatever our calling may be greater than the other you know some might have greater responsibilities and things that they're accountable for um, but there are things that come along with all of them I think and there's yes. accountability yeah. with all of them actually you know even if it's just being responsible for praying for someone you know yeah. because that prayer might be what's needed to <clears throat> help that person and I just thank the Lord that it is that way and that he's so good to us yeah. alright everybody's testified but Stephanie Still ain't got her out here. <laughs> so uh, we've got uh, we've got somebody tonight's got a birthday. We've been doing this just like we do do at church a lot of times at the end of the service. We have them prayed and everything, and they testified. I enjoyed all, each and every testimony tonight. But uh, if you're got a Facebook friend, maybe I know a lot of people are friends on Facebook, and they don't know people that well. Just kind of know of them or different things, but. This is the Tyler Mountain Walker Simpson on <laughs> Facebook. Tyler, Brother Tyler Simpson. Uh, he's been here at my house and friend yeah. uh, for years and years since him and Whitney started dating. and he come here a long time ago. And I told him Whitney was Whitney was one of mine too, so he better watch his steps. But he's, he's been good, and I love Brother Tyler. He's... he's uh, He's moved up and started preaching and doing good. I've heard him preach. He's just doing a wonderful job. And I, I love Brother Tyler. Yeah. I really do. I love Brother Tyler. So we're going to sing him a happy birthday. He may not be on with us tonight, but <clears throat> we can tell him we done it. I don't know if he is or not, but uh, we can tell him we done it. He can go back and watch it anyway. It'll, be, it'll live on the internet in infamy. <laughs> is that G? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Brother Tyler. Happy birthday to you. Many more birthdays to you. logged on to be with us tonight and, and uh, remember Thursday nights is going to be our normal night going forward and I'll try to post on Saturday or at least early Sunday morning and let you know if we're going to be able to do a Sunday night service and uh, that way uh, I, I'm still uh, remembering all those that are, are kind of shut in we've got Jackie Omst has been on with us and we've got her, her boys in the and all well grandchildren and everything in the in the prayer request list over there. And we love Sister Jackie. She can't get to always come out like she wants to. Sister Wilma Roberts down there and Leslie County. We're gonna try to try to try to keep something going and, and uh, try to help and be a help if it if I'm just helping a few. I'm 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 thankful for what little bit I can do. So uh, we're gonna try to be doing so look for us on Thursday nights and possibly on on Sunday nights and if anything changes just just watch for a message to come out. We're glad you were with us. May God bless each and every one of you. Good night.